Hi there, my name is Brian. I'm co-founder of Bristle Health, and in this video, I'll be walking you through how to understand your Bristle saliva test results that you'll be receiving shortly. First, we'll start with a quick background on the oral microbiome. So inside each of our mouths lives a vibrant and diverse community of bacteria and fungi. There are over 800 unique species that have been found in the mouth, and they can influence our health in both good and bad ways. This community is called the oral microbiome. To better understand how these bacteria contribute to our health, let's imagine it as a garden. So to have a healthy and happy garden, we need a good variety of different plants, vegetables, and other crops that live harmoniously together and provide us nutrition. But when we don't tend to our garden, or it becomes influenced by environmental or outside factors, our good crops can die, and this leaves weeds and other invasive plants to take over the garden, further harming the soil and any remaining good crops. Similarly, in a healthy oral microbiome, we need a good variety of different bacteria and fungi that live harmoniously with each other and us to keep us healthy. But when we fall behind on our hygiene or introduce other factors like too much sugar or certain medications, or if we use broad antimicrobials like alcohol-based mouthwash. These good bacteria can die, and harmful bacteria can start to grow in number and cause trouble. Some of these bacteria create acid, which can erode our teeth's enamel. Others release byproducts that lead to inflammation or bad breath. We also know this doesn't stop in the mouth. These harmful bacteria have been associated with impacting our overall health in a number of ways including our gut health, our heart health, our metabolism, and more. The bristle test identifies and measures all of the bacteria and fungi found in saliva. Through our research, we've identified which bacteria contribute to conditions like bad breath, gum inflammation, and tooth decay, and importantly, which are beneficial to our health. By measuring the amount of bacteria related to each condition, we can give you and your care team insight into how these species may be affecting your oral and overall health. Now we'll jump into the bristle report to learn more. We're now inside your bristle report. In the report, you'll find that there's five tabs that contain different information for your test results. The primary tab is your overview tab, which contains your oral health report card. And we'll explore that in more depth shortly. The other tabs include Care Plan. This is where we will provide personalized recommendations to help you improve your oral microbiome based on your test results. Detailed Results. This contains a more in-depth breakdown of the bacteria and fungi that contribute to each score. The Compare tab, which will show you how your results change from one bristle test to the next, so you can track your progress and see which interventions work best for you. And then lastly, the raw results. This tab contains the full breakdown of all bacteria and fungi detected. Our algorithm takes all this information into account when creating your report card. So we usually only recommend looking at this if there are particular bacteria or fungi you're interested in, or if you're a microbiology nerd like us. So now we're gonna go over the oral health report card. So the report card provides a summary of your test results, allowing you to quickly understand your oral microbiome's health. Each score, as we see on the left, includes a few pieces of information. First, it'll be the insight. So this insight is which condition we're reporting on. In this case, we're measuring the abundance of bacteria that are associated with gum inflammation, beneficial bacteria, and tooth decay. You'll see that each score ranges from 0 to 10, which reflects the abundance of bacteria related to a given condition, with 10 being the highest. The higher the score means the more bacteria you have associated to that score. And there's two things we want to keep in mind here. Everyone has a small abundance of bad bacteria in their oral microbiome, and this is actually a good thing. It's part of having a healthy community. We aren't always aiming for zero, so that's why we try to lean away from approaches that tend to wipe out everything. And in some cases, having a higher abundance of bacteria can be a good thing. 
like in the beneficial bacteria that contribute to good oral health. Lastly, for each score, we'll give you the context to the right. This will give you an idea of where your score ranks and help you interpret where you are on each condition and what the key takeaway is. So this first section is oral health insights. And we're gonna go through what each of these different scores means. So beneficial measures the beneficial bacteria that drive good oral health. Gum inflammation measures the abundance of bacteria that have been found to cause inflammation, which can lead to gingivitis and gum disease. And then tooth decay measures the abundance of bacteria that produce acids, which can lead to erosion and decay. Next, you'll find we have our additional health and wellness insights. Wellness scores provide insights into how bacteria in the oral microbiome influence conditions beyond what you'd typically consider dental care. The halitosis score, or bad breath score, measures the abundance of bacteria that produce compounds called volatile sulfur compounds, or VSCs, and these are the molecules that actually give bad breath its odor. A high score indicates a high abundance of bacteria that produce VSCs that are likely the source of your bad breath if you're experiencing it. If you are experiencing bad breath, but you don't find a high halitosis score, this could point to it coming from another source like your sinus or your gut. Speaking of gut, the gut impact score measures bacteria and fungi in the mouth that can affect the gut and influence conditions like IBS, IBD, and Crohn's. For example, a high score can indicate that you have an overabundance of specific bacteria in your mouth that may be negatively influencing your gut health. By reducing the abundance of these bacteria, we can help reduce the levels of inflammation in these bacteria coming from the mouth, which in turn may help your gut health. Next, we have the nitric oxide score. Nitric oxide is a very important molecule for our cardiovascular health and specific bacteria in our oral microbiome play a role in producing it. This score measures the abundance of those bacteria and reflects the ability of your bacteria to produce nitric oxide. So this is another score where we wanna see a higher score because it means we can produce more nitric oxide, which generally leads to overall better health. Lastly, we have the diversity score. Diversity measures the variety of species identified in your sample. If we see extremes on the very low end or the very high end, this could be something to investigate further. Anything in the middle will be within range and a good goal. As we continue down, you'll see that we have the oral and systemic health associations feature. Note, Presence or elevated levels of these bacteria do not mean that they will cause disease or that you have the disease. This information is presented purely to help you understand if you have any bacteria that have been associated with systemic health conditions, so you can proactively address them and be aware of the impact they could potentially have on your oral health and your overall health. Next, we'll go over to the care plan. So you might be wondering what you can do to help improve your oral microbiome biome balance, and you'll find all that information on this tab. Here, we've created a hygiene protocol and a list of interventions that are backed by science to help improve your oral microbiome. Your care plan, as shown here, may be split into, phase, into two phases. In phase one, we may recommend interventions like a mouth rinse for a short period to help reduce the levels of bad bacteria in your oral microbiome. In phase two, we recommend interventions like oral probiotics and supplements that can help nurture your good bacteria and help restore balance in the oral microbiome. For each recommendation, you'll find a link to the products that contain our recommended ingredients. We do not have relationships with these companies, and if you'd like to explore other options, you can scroll down and get more information on the ingredients we recommend and how they can help improve your health. So you can research products that work best for you. Another note here, 
These recommendations are only at-home care and are based solely on your oral microbiome, which is a component of your health. Your care team will have a much deeper understanding of your oral health based on your in-person examination, and they may very well recommend different at-home care products or interventions based on a deeper examination of your oral health and knowledge of your preferences. We always recommend following the guidance of your care team as they will know your oral health and your preferences best. We hope this video has helped you better understand what to expect from your Bristol test results. If you have any questions on the video, or if there's any other way we can help you, please just reply to this email and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you.